Hello everyone. In this video, we will learn to perform stoichiometric calculations. Specifically, we learn to translate a chemical reaction into a balanced chemical equation to calculate the amounts of reactants required or products formed in a chemical reaction. First, let us define the term stoichiometry. Stoichiometry is the study of quantitative relationships between the amounts of reactants and products in a chemical reaction. In fact, the word stoichiometry is derived from two Greek words, stoichion, which means element, and metron, which means measure. Therefore, stoichiometry literally means measuring elements. At the center of solving any question related to stoichiometry lies a balanced chemical equation, without which you cannot solve the given problem. Therefore, the first thing we need to learn is how to translate a given chemical reaction into a balanced chemical equation. Let us consider a reaction in which methane gas combines with oxygen gas to form carbon dioxide gas and water vapor. This is a combustion reaction of methane. This reaction can be represented by the following chemical equation. Methane and oxygen are called the reactants of the reaction and they are placed on the left side of an arrow. Carbon dioxide and water are called products of the reaction and they are placed on the right side of the arrow. We also show the physical states of all the reactants and products in a chemical equation. It's given that all the reactants and products are in the gaseous state and we indicate this by writing a letter G next to each of the chemical formulas. Similarly, we represent liquids by writing L, solids by writing S, and the substances dissolved in water are represented by writing AQ, which means aqueous. The equation itself is called an unbalanced chemical equation. An unbalanced chemical equation is of no use in terms of solving a stoichiometry problem. Therefore, the next step is to balance the equation. There are two important principles behind the balancing process. One, in a chemical reaction, atoms are neither created nor destroyed. Therefore, all the atoms on the reactant side must be present on the product side. 2. The identity of the reactants and products of a chemical reaction are experimentally determined. Therefore, the formulas of the chemical compounds which represent the identity of the compounds must never be changed when balancing a chemical equation. Let us now balance this chemical equation using the two principles discussed. We do the balancing by trial and error method. We look at each atom and balance it on both sides of the equation. When balancing a chemical equation, we always start with more complicated molecules first. That is, the molecules with greatest number of atoms. For example, in this equation, the most complicated molecule is methane, which contains carbons and hydrogen atoms. First, let us begin by balancing carbon atoms on both sides. We have one carbon on the reactant side and one carbon on the product side. Carbons are already balanced. 
next let's balance the hydrogen atoms we have four hydrogens on the reactant side and only two hydrogens on the product side what we cannot do is change the chemical formula of the product from H2O to H4O this changes the identity of the product which is water as discussed earlier the identities of the reactants and products are experimentally determined and these cannot be changed during the balancing process what we do to balance the hydrogens is to change the number of water molecules formed in the chemical reaction by placing a 2 before water this represents that there are two water molecules formed in the reaction each water molecule has two hydrogen atoms therefore four hydrogens total on the product side the number two is called the stoichiometric coefficient for water all the atoms in methane are now balanced next we will balance the atoms in oxygen molecule there are two oxygen atoms on the reactant side and four oxygen atoms on the product side we balance this by placing a two before the oxygen molecule we are now done with all the atoms now let us verify if all the atoms are balanced on both sides of the equation carbons we have one on each side hydrogens four on the reactant side and four on the product side oxygens four on the reactant side and four on the product side all the atoms are balanced this is a balanced chemical equation representing the combustion reaction of methane there is a lot of information that we can deduce from a balanced equation as we have seen earlier the balanced equation can be translated as one molecule of methane reacts with two molecules of oxygen to form one molecule of carbon dioxide and two molecules of water if we multiply the entire equation with Avogadro's number Na we get one mole of methane reacts with two moles of oxygen to form one mole of carbon dioxide and two moles of water note that the coefficients in a chemical equation represent either number of molecules of reactants and products or number of moles not the masses of molecules that is using the balanced equation we cannot write one gram of methane reacts with two grams of oxygen to form one gram of carbon dioxide and two grams of water however when we are in a laboratory and running the reaction we can only measure the amounts of reactants and products in terms of grams using a balance therefore most of the practical questions in stoichiometry involves converting the moles of reactants and products into grams we have learned earlier how to do this using molar masses as conversion factors we can interpret the equation as 1 times 16 grams of methane reacts with 2 times 32 grams of oxygen to form 1 times 44 grams of carbon dioxide and 2 times 18 grams of water in summary we can use the balanced chemical equation to calculate the amounts of reactants required or the products formed in a chemical reaction both in terms of moles or grams let us now solve a couple of examples 
per the earlier reaction what mass of oxygen will react with 56.10 grams of methane the first thing we need to do to solve a stoichiometry related problem is to write the balanced equation which we have already done earlier according to the balanced equation one mole of methane reacts with two moles of oxygen to form one mole of carbon dioxide and two moles of water recall that the stoichiometry coefficients in the equation represents moles or molecules and not grams the question is about the relationship between methane and oxygen so let us isolate these two we know from the balanced equation that one mole of methane requires two moles of oxygen to be able to use this relationship we need the amount of methane in moles however we are given the amount of methane in grams so the first step is to convert 56.1 grams of methane into moles of methane we can use the molar mass of methane as conversion factor so we start with 56.1 grams of methane and multiply it with a conversion factor that has grams of methane in the denominator and moles of methane in the numerator that is 1 mole of methane per 16.04 grams of methane grams of methane grams of methane gets cancelled if we plug these numbers into the calculator we get 3.4975 moles of methane next we can use the stoichiometric coefficients in the balanced equation to calculate the number of moles of oxygen that reacts with 3.4975 moles of methane step 2 we start with 3.4975 moles of methane and multiply it with a conversion factor that has moles of methane in the denominator and moles of oxygen in the numerator from the balanced equation we know that every mole of methane reacts with two moles of oxygen moles of methane moles of methane gets cancelled if we plug this into the calculator we get 6.995 moles of oxygen however we want the amount of oxygen in grams so we convert the moles of oxygen into mass of oxygen in grams using molar mass of oxygen as the conversion factor we start with 6.995 moles of oxygen and multiply it with a conversion factor that has moles of oxygen in the denominator and grams in the numerator that is 32.00 grams per mole moles of oxygen gets cancelled if we plug these numbers into the calculator we get 223.8 grams of oxygen molecules so we did this problem in three steps one we convert the mass of methane into moles of methane using the molar mass of methane as conversion factor two convert the moles of methane into moles of oxygen using the stoichiometric coefficients in balanced equation three convert the moles of oxygen into mass of oxygen using the molar mass of oxygen these three steps can be combined in a single step we start with 56.1 grams of methane multiply it with a conversion factor that converts grams of methane into moles that is 1 mole of methane per 16.04 grams of methane grams of methane grams of methane gets cancelled in the second step we convert moles of methane into moles of oxygen so we multiply this with a conversion factor that has moles of methane in the denominator and moles of oxygen in the numerator 
from the balanced equation we know that one mole of methane reacts with two moles of oxygen moles of methane moles of methane gets cancelled in the third step we convert moles of oxygen into grams of oxygen by multiplying it with a conversion factor that has 32.00 grams of oxygen in the numerator and 1 mole of oxygen in the denominator moles of oxygen moles of oxygen gets cancelled if we plug these numbers into the calculator we get the same answer as 223.8 grams of oxygen example 2 for the same reaction calculate the mass of water formed when 100 grams of methane is completely consumed again the first thing we need to do is to write the balanced equation one mole of methane reacts with two moles of oxygen to form one mole of carbon dioxide and two moles of water the question is about the relationship between methane and water so let's isolate them we know from the balanced equation that one mole of methane produces two moles of water we follow the same steps that we used in the previous slide one we convert the mass of methane into moles of methane using molar mass two convert moles of methane into moles of water using the balanced chemical equation 3 convert moles of water into mass of water using the molar mass of water let us do this in a single step we start with 100 grams of methane and first convert grams of methane into moles of methane so the conversion factor we use is 1 mole of methane per 16.04 grams of methane grams of methane grams of methane gets cancelled now we have the answer in moles of methane next we convert the moles of methane into moles of water so the conversion factor should have moles of methane in the denominator and moles of water in the numerator from the balanced equation we know that for every mole of methane it produces 2 moles of water moles of methane moles of methane gets cancelled now we have the answer in moles of water next we convert moles of water into grams of water using the molar mass as the conversion factor we multiply this with a conversion factor that has moles of water in the denominator and grams of water in the numerator that is 18.00 grams of water per 1 mole of water moles of water moles of water gets cancelled and we are left over with grams of water which is what we wanted if we plug in all these numbers into the calculator we end up getting 224.4 grams of water this is the amount of water produced when 100.0 grams of methane is completely consumed in the reaction